بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to uh, this uh, class about the uh, happiness or the concept of happiness something that is quite disputed all over the world everybody is searching for happiness everybody has his own or her own definition of, uh, of happiness and uh, people dispute that all the time. And there are many people who are searching for it throughout their life. Some of them uh, finding it, some of them not finding it, some of them mixing between two different types of, of, uh, of happiness uh, or joy. And uh, this is something that we would like to start with. I don't know if the participant are allowed to speak or not, uh, and therefore, I'll, I'll do my best to try to make it interesting to you, inshallah. If you have any question at any time, don't hesitate. You can write it uh, and type, or type it down, and, and the brother, inshallah, will share it with you. Yes, in inshallah. Arabic, we have two, inshallah. So this two. Is before you begin, uh, sorry, yes, uh, can, you, can you also make this full screen, Sheikh, so that we can have a full uh, it's screen? It's not showing? It's not showing? It is showing, but it's showing with the edited, uh, with the editable okay. options. Okay, what about oh, now? Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. This is perfect. All right, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So the uh, the idea is about the, uh, we have two uh, different words in Arabic, probably also in English and uh, in many other languages. In Arabic, it is, we have farah, which is joy, or something like that. And we have happiness. And uh, there is a dispute among scholar in the language and otherwise about which is which. Um, uh, probably in English, you also have uh, similar to that. So you have the concept of happiness, for example, or joy, something like that. And uh, there might be a difference in the language. In Arabic, farah is something that is temporary. It is not a constant state. It is uh, something that is linked with, with, with a specific matter only. And uh, usually it is exaggerated more than uh, reality. This is called uh, farah in general. A happiness on the other hand is a state, something that is constant. So uh, the, or the sa'ada. In, uh, in Islam, the, the word sa'ada does exist in the Holy Quran, in the Sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In one surah in the Holy Quran, both of them are mentioned. And uh, this is in Surah Hud, toward the very end, where Allah Almighty mentioned Sa'ada twice. Uh, the first one, uh, in both of them, by the way, it is referring to the hereafter, not this world. It is referring to paradise. And this is something that we need to keep in our mind. So the definition of Sa'ada from the Islamic point of view, it is in the hereafter. It is the everlasting happiness uh, felicity. Uh, it is the ultimate goal of all believers. And thus, it is not the same like what people might think. It's not about the 60, 70, 100 years you are going to live here, or your whatever is happening to you here. This has absolutely no link whatsoever to what is going to be in the hereafter. Allah Almighty clearly uh, mentioned this. In Surah Al-Fajr, many people memorize among you, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا كَلَّا So Allah Almighty is speaking about the human being that when his Lord honor him and give him something and bless him in this world and so on, he says, my Lord has honored me, has blessed me. And when, he, when, when his Lord tried him uh, with, with good things and, and easy things. And on the other hand, when his Lord tried him with difficulties and, 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 uh, and difficult tests, he says, my Lord is displeased with me. He has dishonored me. Allah Almighty replies to both of them. He says, no, nay, this is not the case. So in, Neither what you are having in this world is a sign that Allah Almighty is pleased with you, nor the other way around. The same for happiness. Someone who is happy in this world doesn't mean he's going to be happy in the hereafter and not the other way around. And that is why Allah Almighty says in the hereafter, the day it comes, that is the hereafter, uh, 
No, none shall speak. No soul shall speak except with the permission of Allah Almighty. And now people will be two groups. Some of them will be wretched and some of them will be happy. Then Allah Almighty in the next verse, Allah Almighty mentioned uh, the, those who are wretched and then uh, what is going to happen to them? Then Allah Almighty mentioned those who are happy. And as far, uh, as far as for those who are happy, they will be in paradise uh, permanently, abiding there for as long as the heavens and earth will endure. And that is why when we are thinking about happiness, whatever is going to happen, keep this in your mind. Now, is there a link between happiness in that world and in this world, but they are not parallel? Is there such a connection? Yes, there is. Usually, we need to keep in our mind that this world is not a place of reward. This world is a place of test. We are here, we are being tested by Allah Almighty. And in the test, you will have easy questions and you'll have difficult ones. You will have blessings and you'll have trials and tribulations. This is part of life. And we need to keep it in our mind. Do not think that just simply being a believer, you are going to live happily in this world before happily hereafter. So uh, this, this reality is mentioned in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty says in the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, have the people thought that it is enough for them to say, we have believed and they will not be tested? Like, let, let's take an example in our life. Imagine somebody is saying, I am the best person or I am the most knowledgeable person in one, two, three, a certain matter that people requires. Are they going to take it as face value or he has to have to go through some test to make sure that he is up to it, he is serious about it. Same when we go to school, we are tested. Why we are tested? So that they will know who is serious about studying and who is uh, a good achiever and who is uh, not. Now. Uh, the, let us start with the main topic uh, today. Uh, the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you. And uh, this is something that is quite interesting. Uh, some people might not keep it in their mind. You might see people around you who are blessed in worldly matters. However, something is lacking in their soul. So they are not very good believers or they might not be believers at all or they might not be abiding by the Islamic rules and regulations. And you will find that there are lots of uh, psychological problems, if you may say, with them. Um, mental problems sometimes. And in fact, if you go through the world map and you will check about the, for example, the age-related dementia or la loss of, of mental uh, abilities and, uh, and so on. And you will find there is, uh, somewhat of a link between the more developed a country is or people are materialistically, the, the more they will have of these problems. And uh, even, even uh, human beings, uh, anybody probably in your life, when you do something good, something that is beneficial to other people, how do you feel about yourself? Don't you feel... Uh, a little uh, blessing, don't you feel uh, uh, happy with yourself, happy with your achievement and so on? And this is something that people agree upon, Muslim or non-Muslim. In Islam, this is clearly mentioned and di directly mentioned by Allah Almighty. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَا نُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَا نَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ So on the other hand, when somebody does a bad thing, get forbid, how does he feel? So even if nobody saw you, nobody knew about it, your heart, your mind will be nagging you. Your soul will not be at rest. Allah Almighty mentioned this reality in the Holy Quran as though for those who do good, whosoever does goodness, whether a male or a female, and he is a believer in Allah Almighty we will surely bless them with a good life, mean in this world. And we will certainly reward them according to the best of their deed. This is in the hereafter. Means he will be more content with himself and with this world and with his life uh, in this world before the hereafter. Now, uh, 
Something else which is uh, about a relationship with, your, with Allah Almighty is the message of God Almighty. How do you feel if you received a message from your beloved one, your most beloved one? Now on social media, I know it comes to you or a notification that so-and-so have sent a message. How quick are you going to open it and read it? To Allah Almighty is the greater example. You have the most important message from your creator to you. Shouldn't you read this message? Shouldn't you contemplate on the meaning? What does he want from me? Why did he send this message? What is in it for me in this world and hereafter? Connecting with the message of Allah Almighty is one of the greatest thing that a person can do because Allah Almighty promised, and this is to all of humanity, even to the disbelievers, even to the disbelievers, there is guidance in this book. There is guidance in this book from Lord Almighty. That is why the surah starts with the with all mankind, all mankind. There comes to you an advice or guidance from your Lord. This is the Lord here, the creator. He is speaking about the Lordship. The Lordship, all the creator, uh, the, the creatures of Allah Almighty fall under the Lordship of Allah Almighty. The first ayah in the Holy Quran after Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you find Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Lord of all the worlds. So everything that God created falls under this. So he's speaking to mankind because he is their Lord, all of them. There is guidance for you. And subhanAllah in the Holy Quran, there is guidance even for the non-Muslims of how to live a happy life in this world how to be good people in this world, even if they are not believers. However, there is extra in this ayah. Immediately after that, Allah Almighty mentions what is in this message in the Holy Quran for the believers. He says, and for the believers come a cure for the ailment of their heart. Whatever is inside the sudur, whatever is inside their breast and guidance and mercy for the believers. So they, you have three things. Here's not only guidance for all mankind, full stop. Then it has a cure for what is in the breast. This could be for all mankind or could be only for the believers. And then guidance and mercy for the believers exclusively. So you find the, the, the message of God Almighty, you need to connect with the message of God Almighty at least, at least on a regular basis, like you are connecting on social media with the messages of people. So in fact, it should have priority. It should have priority. However, uh, at least the minimum you could do is to keep connection with Allah Almighty and his message uh, on a regular basis. The scholars mentioned as uh, someone who has not read anything from the Holy Quran in one day, he has neglected the God forbid. So at least, Try to read one page, less or more, on a daily basis, so that you will be among those who are connecting with Allah Almighty. One of the best means of connection with God Almighty, direct connection, is the Salah. The Salah is your direct meeting with Allah Almighty. This happens on a daily basis, multiple times every day. SubhanAllah, uh, if you love someone, you would love to meet him. You would love to be in his company, love to be there with him. And to Allah Almighty is a greater example. So here, how do you love to meet Allah Almighty? How often do you want to do that? In the Holy Quran uh, explained to us that the Salah is the connection between you and Allah Almighty. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, it is a direct connection between you and God Almighty, your creator. Anyone who neglects the Salah, he has no covenant with Allah Almighty. No connection. Don't come in the year after. If you have neglected the salah entirely, God forbid, don't come in the year after and say to God, oh God, I believed in you. Oh God, I'm a follower of your uh, uh, way. I want your pleasure. Where is the proof? The minimum, the minimum is the daily meeting with God Almighty. This meeting has lots of benefit for you in this world because it actually reset your, your, your course, your path, your salat al-mustaqim, your relationship with Allah Almighty. We are very busy in our life, true? From the moment we wake up 
we brush, we wash, we put on our clothes and we go to work and continue our life and so on, come back, have some uh, food, uh, relax a little, afternoon tea and so on. And, and then some social activities and then sleep and, and repeat. Where is the soul? Where is the relationship with Allah Almighty through that? Most people are busy in their worldly matters. So that is why they do not have that connection with Allah Almighty. The Salah comes as a reminder, I think the minimum few minutes every, every now and then to connect with Allah Almighty. How do you feel about the Salah? Imagine it's people, for example, uh, you heard a, a sad news, a beloved one passed away. You are sad, you are crying and so on. Then it's the time for the Salah, you go to the Salah. You might even cry in the Salah. How do you feel after the Salah? You feel that a huge burden has been removed from you. Feels that your, your, your mentality, your thinking, your behavior has been uh, aligned, has been corrected. Going back to the normal, to the medium, and so on. The Salah does that. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, part of what the Salah does is to protect you from wrongdoing and injustice. Because you have been in, the, uh, in a meeting with Allah Almighty. Imagine a person who is not a good Muslim. He does or indulges in many wrongdoings. We are human beings. We might err and do mistakes. And he goes for the salah. So he was doing something wrong, watching something haram, whatever, whatever it might be. It is the time for the salah. He goes to the salah. He returns back with the intention of continuing, even the haram thing, God forbid. But does he go directly to the haram? Or there is a buffer now. He feels slightly ashamed from himself, of himself slightly shy of Allah Almighty. And this is the way the Salah works in keeping you clear from the filth of this world, keeping you pure. And thus it helps in, in your psychological well-being. And if you do not have psychological well-being, how are you going to enjoy this world? If you have everything in the world, but your psychology is problematic, you will not be able to enjoy this world. You have to take some medication and some courses and treatment so that you will be able to enjoy the blessing that you have around you. The Salah does that. Salah is a regular purification for the person, regular meeting with Allah Almighty. You need to keep it uh, this way. Also, you need to protect yourself from the stealers of happiness. There are many things that steals your happiness. Lots of things. Among them is the sins and wrongdoings. They spoil for you, they, they give you a pleasure for a temporary pleasure. This is usually the, why a person is doing that sin, whatever it might be. It gives a worldly pleasure or temporary pleasure. And uh, uh, as soon as it's over, he starts regretting it. He starts returning back to Allah Almighty, making his step far and so on. But it has stolen from him these precious moments. And he might be, still regretting it for a longer period of time and thus missing up. He, he cannot enjoy the halal because of the haram. We find many people coming with questions, for example, I've been doing so and so, and that is why I cannot do one, two, three of the halal thing. I had wrong relationship, thus I, I am afraid of getting married. I had uh, consumed so and so, thus I am afraid of joining uh, classes or memorizing the Quran and so on. He is afraid because of his sin of doing what is correct and what is right. This is uh, uh, one of the tricks of shaitan. You need to keep yourself aware of it. Let nothing stop you from connecting with Allah Almighty. Now to be happy, you need to stay clear from them. It doesn't mean you are not going to make mistakes at all. This doesn't exist. We are human beings. The muttaqun, the pious one, it doesn't mean they don't do mistake. It doesn't mean they don't err. No, they do, they are human beings. However, the difference between muttaqi, a pious one, and a non-pious one is the non-pious one, when he does a mistake, he continues. It becomes part of his life. It's normal. Nothing is wrong with it. So he repeated readily every time. And thus, he might be drifting away from Allah Almighty. And muttaqi, the righteous one, when he makes mistake, he remembers. When shaitan fools him or he falls for a mistake, he immediately returns back to Allah Almighty. 
seek istighfar from Allah Almighty and correct himself and start increasing his good deed to make up for the mistake. Uh, now, how do you know if that sin is from shaitan or from yourself? This is a common question and this is something very important. Pay attention to it. How do you know this sin, this wrongdoing is a trick from shaitan or it is your own soul, your choice, your own? The shaitan wants you to make any sin, whatever it might be, regardless of any benefit for you. So if it is just any sin, just you would like to do something wrong, whatever it might be, just to be obnoxious, just to be, to be a, a wrongdoer. This is from shaitan. However, if it is a specific pleasure, you would like that pleasure. At that time, you, 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 you are inclined to it. This is from your own self. In both cases, you need, as the Messenger of Allah taught us, seek refuge with Allah Almighty from both of them, from the tricks of shaitan or from your own trick, from the evil of shaitan and the evil of ourselves. Purification of the soul is one of the greatest goals in Islam. So much so, there is one surah in the Holy Quran where Allah Almighty is making an oath, then an oath, then an oath, then an oath, all the way to 11 oaths. Washamsi wa duhaha. All the way. Until Allah Almighty says, what is the answer to all of these oaths? What is it? What is it that Allah Almighty is swearing by them? For what? That Allah Almighty says, Qad speaking about the soul. What made you human? The ability that God Allah Almighty gave you. The spirit inside you. Allah Almighty says about that soul, he says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا He has succeeded. Successful is the one who has purified it, purified his soul. And the, the, the failed one, the failed person is the one who does not uh, purify, the one who pollutes it, does sins and wrongdoing, and thus he keeps on polluting. Now, the concept of, of that is very simple. That is why Allah Almighty uses the verb here, zakkaha, means you, you, you continue to do that. It is not a one-off. One it's like your cloth, for example. If the cloth get dirty, what do you do? You do not add another dirt and another dirt. You start, you should try your best to remove it as soon as possible. And that is the uh, element we are speaking about uh, here. Also, the remembrance of Allah Almighty. They say in Arabic, in, in, in uh, beautiful uh, adage that uh, when someone loves something, he mentions it a lot. If you sit with somebody and he is a fan uh, of football, he starts telling you all the news about football. He's fond of so-and-so scholar. He starts mentioning about all the latest activity of that scholar, the best moments and so on. He's fond of that writer, all his latest book, latest novels, and so on. Whenever somebody loves something, he mentions it a lot. Now, if you are serious about your relationship with Allah Almighty, you will remember him a lot. But why should you remember Allah Almighty? It is your duty to Allah Almighty, of course, but there are lots of things in it for you. The first one, Allah Almighty promised, if you will remember him, he will remember you. If you mention him within yourself, he will mention you by name within himself. If you will mention him in a group of people, Allah Almighty will mention you, mention you, your name, in a gathering among the angels. That is much better than the gathering that you are in. So that by itself is something that is very important because when Allah Almighty looks upon you with mercy and blessing, of course, uh, he will provide for you the best in this world. Second thing, it tranquils the heart. You will feel contentment and happiness within your heart, within yourself. This is the reward for those who remember Allah Almighty. As Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran, Allah bidikrillahi tatma'inul qulub. Verily, in the remembrance of Allah Almighty, hearts do find tranquility or comfort. On the other hand, the one who is far away from remembrance of Allah Almighty, there is a warning that he will not live a happy life. He will have a difficult life in this world. It doesn't mean he will not have money or not family, he will not have belonging, uh, property. No, the materialistic things are aside. That is why when Allah Almighty mentioned, he mentioned the hearts, the souls, 
We are talking about that. So the one who does not remember Allah Almighty, he will not feel that tranquility of the heart, the comfort of the heart. He will not have, because you are talking about this, the, the spiritual well-being of a person. And to have that spiritual well-being, you need the remembrance of Allah Almighty. Now, uh, with this, uh, we finish the, the, the type of the, the spiritual well-being from the Islamic point of view, all right? Now coming to something else, which is the mental well-being, if you may. This is a state of mind of a person and his outlook to the future. Optimism is essential in Islam. It is one of the sunnah of the messenger وسلم, and every Muslim should be optimistic all the time, all the time. However, I will speak about optimism later, inshallah. But you need to trust Allah Almighty. If you are in an uh, airplane traveling from a continent to another continent, do you worry about the pilot? Do you question him? Do you question his decisions? Why did he do one, two, three? Or do you trust him that he's going to fly you and land you safe? So what about your trust with Allah Almighty? Everything is under the control of God Almighty. Do you trust him or not? You should. So when something good or bad happens to you, you should trust Allah Almighty. Just as when you are in their plane and they tell you, for example, we are uh, flying over a, a turbulence or, or something, you need to uh, fasten your seatbelt. Do you, do you listen to that? Do you think that this is for your own good? You are not allowed to go or move. They might take the food away from you and so on. Are you upset with them? Or do you trust their decision? I, to Allah Almighty is the greater example. So what you need to do is you need to trust Allah Almighty. He is the one who is guiding everything. So when something bad happens to you, it is for your own goodness. When something good is taken from you, it is for your own goodness. Whatever it ha happens, it is for your own goodness. You might be hating a certain things that happen to you, but later on you will realize, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, that thing didn't happen. And anyone who has that uh, clarity of the soul, he will know this of himself. Go back throughout your life. There are things that you wanted so much and then you did not get. And later on, alhamdulillah, you were able to uh, realize that uh, Allah Almighty took it away for a very good reason. Alhamdulillah, it didn't happen. So this is the ayah that Allah Almighty clarifies this point for us. You might... Uh, dislike something, but then in it, there are lots of goodness for you. And you might love something, but in it, there's lots of bad things for you. And Allah Almighty knows, and you do not know. So always, always remember to make istikhara. Ask Allah Almighty to choose for you whatever decision you are making. And this way, inshallah, that decision will be the best for you. Keep your trust with Allah Almighty, because if Allah Almighty is with you, you have not lost anything in this world. If you have lost Allah Almighty, you have not gained anything in this world. And that connection with Allah Almighty is the best uh, guarantee, inshallah, of your happiness in this world and eternal happiness in the hereafter. Uh, now, um, looks might be deceiving, yeah? Especially nowadays, we are very clear about that. You'll find people looking on uh, a certain typical person on the social media, and then you realize he is a totally different person outside. Looks can be deceiving a lot. This is part of life, true. However, what is the actual person? Who is he, who is she? The, the outside or the inside? Usually the personality is the inside. If you take people around you, all the people around you that you love, that you care about, that you respect, what is it that you like about them? Usually it is not the materialistic one, unless if you are a materialistic person, which is a different story. But usually it is their personality, their behaviors, their way of life, their etiquettes, their manners, and so on. The most important out of all of that was is in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. This is the most important defining thing. And that is why as long as your heart is pure, your heart is good, your heart does not carry the sickness and diseases of the heart, envy, hatred, 
uh, backbiting, ill thoughts about other people, and so on. If you purify your heart from all of these, you will have a happier life. You'll be much happier in your life. And that is why people usually who are sad, if you'll sit with them, if you listen them to speak, they have a bad outlook to everyone around them. So their heart is filled with, with, with anger and, and discomfort and dislike and distrust with people around them. Why is that? The heart, nobody knows about it except Allah Almighty. You take people as they are. For you, yourself, purify your heart so that you will have a happy life, uh, inshallah. Now, uh, optimism. Now, this is the time probably to speak about it with a little more details. This is probably the most practical way of getting happiness in this world. Be optimistic, no matter how difficult it might be, no matter how dark it might be. Soon, inshallah, you'll find light. As they say, the darker the night gets, the closer the day is. This is a proverb in Arabic. So do not worry. It is close. The solution is there. When the sickness is at its top, that is when it, the time is going to diminish slowly, inshallah, and quickly, and so on. The, the situation you are in is very dire, very difficult. Yes, inshallah, soon it is going to be best. Who said that? Allah Almighty said that. There is a beautiful uh, ayah in the Holy Quran, uh, in a beautiful surah. And this surah is called uh, Surah Al-Sharh or Al-Shirah. And this is about the, 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 the comfort of the heart and the, the tranquility of the heart and the expansion of the heart. When someone feels so much comfort and, and happiness and joy and relaxation and he feels no pressure whatsoever in his breast. This is the name of that surah. In that surah, there are two very strange verses. Allah Almighty says, verily, along with the hardship, there is ease. Then, verily, along with the hardship, there is ease. Twice, only one letter difference between the two verses. And now this might not be very clear from the different aspect of another language, but in Arabic language, this is something that is brilliant. Because here, if you will notice, and people of Arabic might follow with me, uh, there, there is inna ma'al usri yusra. Fa inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. Al usr is mentioned with the article the, with the, along with the hardship. So in both of them, it says the hardship, and the second one, the hardship. However, al yusr, it is not used with the, it is used only yusr. So it does not say al-yusr. He says yusr. And what, what is so specific about it or beautiful in the Arabic language, when you are speaking about something with the article the, it means you are speaking about a specific matter. So it's one thing. So the usr in the first ayah, the usr in the second ayah is the same usr. It is not another one. It is the same usr. Clear? He's referring to the same difficulty. However, when he mentioned the ease, he did not say the ease, he said there is ease. So ease here is not defined. And thus the ease in the first ayah is one thing and the ease in the second ayah is another ease. And that is why the scholars of the series say it's impossible for one hardship to outweigh uh, two ease. It is impossible for one hardship to outweigh two ease. So here the promise from Allah Almighty is for every difficulty, you will have double the ease from Allah Almighty. How beautiful is that? And thus you need to put your uh, trust in Allah Almighty and be optimistic and positive about the outcome. This has a huge effect on, on, on the real uh, life that you are living in this world as well as in the hereafter. There is one Qudsi hadith where Allah Almighty is speaking. The Messenger وسلم, said, Allah Almighty says, I am to my servant whatever he thinks of me. I will be to my servant or I am to my servant whatever he thinks of me. 
means if he is thinking of me that I will do good to him, this is what is going to happen. If he thinks that bad things is going to happen to him, this is what is going to happen. This is one of the most serious hadith and narration or Islamic sources about the importance of keeping a positive and optimistic outlook to everything about you, whatever happens. So a huge difficulty is, is coming. Remind yourself, there will be ease, inshallah, double it. It is going to pass. Remember, always think that Allah Almighty is going to do good things for you. And this is a real thing in life. It's not just psychological matters. This is a reality. Allah Almighty is promising. If you think that he is not going to help you, he is not going to help you. If you truly believe that he is not going to be there for you, he might not be there for you. This is so serious. And on the other hand, if you truly believe Allah might is going to help you, Allah will help you. And this is a practical thing. It doesn't mean you just wish and dream and then sleep. You have to also do your part. And in the hadith of the Messenger, وسلم, beautiful hadith, anyone who is trying to be patient, Allah Almighty will make him patient. Anyone who is trying, see, you have to do your part. Then Allah Almighty is going to help you. And this uh, beautiful hadith is telling us, always expect good things from Allah Almighty. Always. No matter how bad the situation might be. Your son is not studying very well. Don't say he is going to flunk for sure. God forbid. Why did you say that? Why do you say that? It says in, in a state, inshallah, hope that he will study and he will do, inshallah, very well in the exam. Or hope he will do in the exam more than what he studied for. And hope, expect good things. Why do you have to have that negative outlook for the things that did not happen now? Do you know the future? No. So expect good things from Allah Almighty, the most merciful. Always put that in your mind. So and this is the most important part of that is in close relationship. You and your spouse, between you and your children, your, your parents, your friends and relatives. So much so, let me give you an example of that uh, beautiful guidance in, uh, in Islam. And uh, the, the righteous people, when they recite this hadith, usually they say, we will expect Allah Almighty to forgive all our sin and multiply all our rewards and get us in paradise, inshallah, without accountability and so on. Giving the outcome, that is way bigger than whatever you have done. Because the reward in Jannah is not about what you have done or how much you have done. That, that, is, that is very uh, minor toward the reality. The Messenger وسلم, said verily by Allah Almighty, none of you is going to be admitted in paradise because of what they have done. Only your deed, only your good deed. Except with the mercy of Allah Almighty. It makes sense. Imagine how much you have worshipped Allah Almighty. 60 years. Okay. So imagine, let us say, okay, you deserve for that 60 years in paradise. Full stop. And this is more than whatever it might be. You, you are working like eight hours or 10 hours to get like few hundred dirhams. So you, how much you have worshipped Allah Almighty? One hour every day? How much, how much is that? So it's not, it's not in comparison. You are talking about a blessing from Allah Almighty. So when you ask Allah Almighty, ask him for huge things, not little things. I remember a man in, in, who was in a huge difficulty. He has an outstanding debt of some thousands of dirhams. And all his dua was concentrated on getting these thousands of dirhams only. This is not a good dua to make. Pray for more. Pray for much more. Why do you think that yeah, Allah Almighty is not going to give you more? So always expect from Allah Almighty great things and demand from him great things, not little things. And uh, also be thankful of what you have. As there is a, a beautiful uh, proverb that says, uh, you know, uh, enjoy all that you have rather than waiting for uh, to have everything, okay? No need to wait for having to have everything. Rather than that, enjoy all that you have. This is, this is the true happiness. And uh, the Messenger وسلم, highlighted this, and Allah Almighty highlighted this in two places in the Holy Quran as well. In the first one, Allah Almighty is saying, and thank me, be thankful to me, and do not be ungrateful. Be grateful for the thing that you have with you from Allah Almighty. You might think that they are little. No, they are not little. Every human being in this world, Allah Almighty has blessed him with countless things beyond imagination. Who is ready, for example, to lose one of his main senses 
for a few thousands of dollars or, or, or more. Or, or to lose beloved members around you or, or uh, part of everything in your life. So everything, appreciate the things that you have. You are uh, afflicted with one, two, three, ten diseases. Yes, but at the same time, Allah Almighty has protected you from tens of thousands of other diseases. So why don't you be grateful for all of these? So the problem with our mentality is we are thinking about what we are losing, what we are not having. We are thinking about the problems that are in front of us, the thing that we are facing so much so they blind us from seeing the big picture. Blind us from being grateful for the rest of the favors. Because God forbid, you might lose all of the others as well. So Alhamdulillah that you have them, enjoy them. And uh, in the story of one of the greatest Sahaba who lost a great amount of money and one of his children, uh, dear children, and his leg was amputated in the same day. So people visited him to counsel him and comfort him. This is a huge loss for any person in the same day, consecutively. But when they visited him, they were surprised. He was thankful to Allah Almighty and 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 and, and uh, praying and and blessing and and sending a, gr a, gr a grateful dua to Allah Almighty. I say, well, why is that? He says, if Allah Almighty has taken one of my children, he has left for me the rest to enjoy. And before taking him, he made me enjoy living with him for so many years. If my money, Allah Almighty has took a portion of my money, Allah Almighty has left for me a huge amount and I have enjoyed so much in my life before. And if I have lost one of my limbs, I still have three with me. You, th this is the, the, the concept of being grateful. What does change now? What, what, what is the thing that changing? Because being sad is not going to bring your child back. It's not going to bring your money back. It's not going to bring your limb back or whatever it is that you have lost. So why are you wasting this moment and a precious moment and another loss, which is losing this time, and instead of being happy, uh, happy, happy and enjoying it, you are uh, being sad, get for good. Another thing for being grateful is that Allah Almighty promised that if you are grateful, he will increase for you the blessing. You don't have to worry that you are going to lose, get for good. No, if you want, and this is something that keeping in your mind as a, a motto, okay? Or is there a ruling in your life? A rule in your life. If you want Allah Almighty to continue being with you as he is with you now, then stay as you are now. If you want him to change, then change. He will change. If you don't want him to change, don't change. He will not change. Whether it is from good to bad or from bad to good. And Allah Almighty mentioned this twice in the Holy Quran. Verily, God Almighty does not change what is with people, the situation of people, until they change what is with themselves. So until you initiate the change, God Almighty is not going to change. So you need to, if, if your situation is bad and you want it to be better, start making the change. Then God Almighty is going to change that for you. If it is good and you are afraid of it becoming bad, God forbid, then don't change your goodness. Continue your goodness or increase it even. And this was clarified in the ayah. Uh, Allah Almighty says, if you are thankful, I shall certainly give you more or increase you. On the other hand, if you are not grateful, ungrateful, uh, God forbid, Allah Almighty might take these blessings uh, from you. God forbid, God forbid. Um, uh, now we will talk about some aspect about the relationship between you and people uh, around you. Uh, let me start by asking a question. There is, people agree that there is a link between tolerance and happiness. But the question is, are tolerant people happier or are happy people more tolerant? Let me repeat that. Are tolerant people more happy or are happy people more tolerant? What do you think? I don't know if you can type in the chat or we can have a poll, a poll from the uh, organizers. There is no right or wrong here. It's just a little refreshment, if you may. I cannot see the chat here. I believe, uh, yes. yeah, so somebody, Pfizer just responded back saying, tolerant people are happier. 
Yeah, so it's a mixed response. So some are saying sure, tolerant, sure. Happy, tolerant people will be happy. So, I mean, yeah, I think <laughs> it is, yes, it is yes. pressure. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> and this is true. This is true in life. There is a huge dispute. Don't worry. I don't think it's going to be settled at any time. And for sure, there is a link between both of them. So they are interlinked together sure. for sure. However, most of the studies show that tolerant people are more happy. And this actually is in line with the Islamic guidance. You need to initiate the start and then you will have the result. And that is why in uh, more than one places in the Holy Quran and in the Hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guiding us to be tolerant and forgiving. And in exchange, Allah Almighty is promising that he will be forgiven to us as well. And this is a beautiful thing. So whatever you are going to do is going to uh, come back to you in this world and in the hereafter. In one beautiful uh, incident, uh, this uh, there was a very bad incident before it that happened, and uh, which was the accusation of the wife of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some of the people, through a few of the people, uh, the hypocrite and some of the believers as well were talking. Narrating, just like some people love to relate whatever news, no matter how strange it might be, and like gossiping. One of them, one of these people was a relative of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and Abu Bakr radiallahu anh used to give him money support every time and then. So he was relying upon the help of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. Yet when people start talking, he was among the people who also was gossiping, God forbid. So uh, of course, Abu Bakr was extremely upset. You do not expect that from people that you are, you are doing lots of favor to them. So Abu Bakr promised that he is going to stop helping him. Did he do anything wrong? Nothing. This is the least that any person could do, any man could do to defend his daughter. However, Allah Almighty re revealed this beautiful verse eye opener in the eye in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty says at the, the end of it, and uh, in the beginning Allah Almighty says, and let not the those whom Allah Almighty has blessed uh, means being able to help other people. Uh, they have more money that they need. Do not let them make an oath not to help and support their relatives and the poor and the needy. Rather, hear the ayah, this is the part that is translated for you, and let them pardon and forgive. Don't you love that Allah Almighty should forgive you as well? When he heard that, he immediately says yes, and he forgave him and started giving him back. But the idea is, now what changed in the beginning? So in the beginning, he was upset and sad because of that. And he decided to stop the good deed that he used to do before. And then what? Nothing. That, that is not going to change anything. But what happens is that Allah Almighty instructed him to be more tolerant and forgiving. So he forgave and pardoned. How does it feel now? Of course, he feels now more uh, relieved and, and, and happy and expecting great rewards from Allah Almighty. And when Allah Almighty also mentioned the righteous people, he mentioned three levels of goodness, three levels of goodness. Allah Almighty says those who spend means in charity for Allah's sake during prosperity and adversity, good times and bad times, and those who control their uh, anger and those who forgive people. And Allah Almighty loves the doers of good. There is a story also linked with this, but the story comes after the ayah, not before it. One of the grandchildren of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, next generation, and uh, he was performing wudu. And his female servant was serving him the water, powering the water from a container. He was sitting and, and she was standing. And uh, uh, during that, the container fell from her hand into the forehead and made a very ugly cut in the forehead, a huge wound. So she was afraid you might do something or, or uh, so she revealed this ayah. She, she, sorry, she recited this ayah. She read this ayah. She said, 
remember Allah Almighty says those who control their anger. He says, I've controlled my anger. Now, you might have controlled your anger, but you are still upset with me. So it's useless, right? Controlling the anger is step number one. But what about step number two? What is step number two? She says, and Allah Almighty says, and those who forgive people. Forgive here, uh, the, the verb that is used is afu, which is beautiful one. It is different from musamaha only, just forgiveness. This is total forgiveness uh, or removal uh, of, the, of the sin altogether. Uh, it comes from the Arabic verb. You know when you walk on sand or on land and keep a footprint behind you? So there is a, a mark behind you. But when the air comes and cover it or remove it, this is called afu. So you need to remove it altogether. No track of it whatsoever in the back of your mind. This is afu. That is what Allah Almighty mentions here. Because it's useless to forgive and keep it in your mind or in your heart. Always remind yourself. He did this to me. Okay, I forgive him. But he did this to me. Okay, but I forgive him. This is useless. You are going to be in, 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 in the past. You should forget it, never mention it, don't remember it. It's over already, you are past it. And this is what Al-Afin here happens. So she said to him, and then Allah Almighty says, well, Afin nas those who pardon people and forgive them. He says, I have forgiven you. She said, and she was very clever. She says, uh, okay, now number three. And Allah Almighty loves the doer of goodness because the highest level in Islam is when somebody does a mistake against you or harm, harm you, you reply by doing something good to him or to her. This is the highest level of goodness in Islam in, 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 while interacting. So someone insults you, you pray for his goodness and for his blessing. Someone harm you, you give him a gift and so on. This is something that is extremely high. It is very difficult, but this is the highest level. And every Muslim should aim at that. However, not everybody can, can reach it. But of course, the family of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam for sure so as soon as she say to that and allah almighty loves the doer of goodness says you are free to go that's it he set her free and uh, so it started with with that it ended with this this is the concept of forgiveness that we are uh, mentioning but when you are saying forgiveness you should always also link it with pardon and forgetting it so do not keep it in your mind or in your heart it's already over Move past it. Yeah, Allah Almighty knows best. Controlling anger, as we mentioned before in the previous ayah, is the level number one. Because how would you like to drive a car with, without control or with very bad control? How do you like losing control? Would you like to do that? Okay, you are driving in the middle of a highway and the steering is not working anymore. How do you feel? Sadly, we are doing this to ourselves when we get angry. We lose control. So we say bad things. We do bad things. We express bad things. We are going to regret all of them. Whatever you do when you are angry, whatever decision you are making, whatever thing you are saying, whatever you are doing while you are angry, you are going to regret it, guaranteed. Even if you do not do any harm or wrongdoing, you will regret not doing something that you could have done at that moment, which is much better than simply losing control. That is why the, in practice, when you are faced with something that angers you, the first important thing is to control your anger. This is something that is key in happiness. If you are happy with your anger, you are not going to be really happy in life because bad things are going to happen. This is part of life. Bad things are going to happen in this world for two main reasons. Why? Somebody might say, why? why is that? Why? Because of two things. Is this world perfect or unexpected? Many of the things that happen in this world are beyond your control. Is it going to be sunny or, or cloudy tomorrow? Is it going to rain or not? You do not know. It's not in your hand. You cannot change it. Are there going to be a hurricane, for example, accident in the road? That is not in your hand. You cannot. So this world is not perfect. So anything could happen. You could become sick, God forbid. Somebody else you had a meeting with could become sick or die. Whatever it might be, many things could go wrong. So this is number one. 
So the world is not perfect. And also people are not perfect. People are going to do bad things and wrongs and mistakes and so on. They are not perfect. They're human beings. So the world is not perfect. The people in the world are not perfect. What do you expect about this world? It is not perfect. So you are going to face lots of such situations. If you are going to be angry all the time, you are not going to be uh, happy with your life for sure. So you need to work on uh, your anger as the Messenger Sallallahu said to the man asking for uh, advice. Uh, another thing is that uh, people are different and people are facing different things in this, in this world. There are people who are tested with good things and people who are tested with bad things. People are tested with wealth, other people are tested with being poor. People are uh, tested with health, other people are tested with being sick, God forbid, and so on, everything. Now, the test is uh, for both of them, right? Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, we test you with the bad and with the good as a trial. This is a test from God Almighty. Now, uh, I would like to take another poll if possible, which is what do you think, which one is easier to win or to succeed in? Test with good things or test with bad things? Who is going to be closer to Allah Almighty? Someone who has the good things in this world or someone who has the bad things in this world? Majority of them say bad, so far bad things, yes. Yeah. You, you are right. You are absolutely right, all of you. So there is no need to continue the lecture. That's it. Alhamdulillah, you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> End of story. You are right. Absolutely right. Usually, people, when they are blessed with worldly matters, they will neglect other people. They will be more into them, themselves, thinking about this world, about this pleasure, and worrying about what they have, and afraid of losing it, and afraid of sharing with other people, and so on. And that is why usually, now that the good and the bad, both of them are tested at the same time, not at a different time. Don't think that the test is different. The test is the same time, the same test. The poor person, the difficult person is tested with being patient, expecting good things from Allah Almighty, having pure heart and being optimistic. Patient and optimistic. The wealthy one is tested with being thankful and appreciating. Part of being thankful is to help the poor person. It is part of your duty. This is the test. So it's not only being thankful, okay, but I am thinking only about myself. No, it is your duty also to help those who are in need. Being a human being, we are one family only. Imagine it is your own family, your own children. So one of you is very wealthy, the other one is very poor. He needed an operation or emergency, he says, no, sorry, this is my money. It's not my problem. Does it make sense? No, and this is the same. All human beings are one family, one big family, as Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran. The closer the people to you, the more right they have about you, uh, upon you. So the relative who is in need, he has more rights than someone who is a foreign. The believing relative has more right than someone who is a relative who is not a believer. The neighbor who is a believing and a relative, he has three more rights than other people who are not, and so on. The closer the people to you, the more rights you have to do. So being close to you in faith, they have right over others. Being close to you in lineage uh, or blood uh, relationship, they have more right than other. Being close to you in a proximity, your neighbors, they have more right than other. So this is part of our social responsibility within the society. Unless you are doing this, you will not be happy. And part of the reason is because you will have a nag in you. The innate nature, good nature that we have. You are, not be, you are not going to be able to enjoy. You will feel that you could do something, but you are stingy and not doing, and thus you are not really pleased with yourself. Leaves. A poor person asking you for some help, you need he, you know for sure he is in need. You are able to help him without causing any difficulty to yourself and you rejected him for whatever reason. How do you feel about yourself? You'll keep reminding yourself, why didn't I do it? Why didn't I help him? All the way, the moment you have a an, an free mind, you will start thinking or regretting that. So part of the goodness and happiness in this world is to help those who are in need. 
and keeping your might. It could have been you who is in need. How do you want the society to deal with you? How do you want them to do? So that, that is why helping other people will help you in multiple ways. The first one, Allah Almighty will be there for you. Second one, the poor person is going to pray for you. And most likely his prayer is accepted by Allah Almighty, inshallah. And thus Allah Almighty will bless you much more. Third one, Allah Almighty will protect for you your blessings and whatever you have of the goodness and, and the property and so on, and will increase it for you as he promised before. Third thing after that, you will be happy with yourself. You're not going to be too worried uh, and so on. Fourth thing, Allah Almighty will facilitate for you your matters in this world and in the hereafter and so on and so forth. There are lots of good things for you in helping other people. Thus, you need to learn this joy in life. And that is why you find many people around the world volunteering. Why are they volunteering? Because they have tasted the beauty and, and, and the happiness of that. When you help people, you will feel much more happy uh, in your life. May Allah Almighty, inshallah, guide us all and enable, uh, enable us all to do that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.